Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. It's going to be a short little episode this. We're just fishing down an edge after doing a little bit of filming here at Momunton Pools. We chucked a couple of pellets down there earlier and seen a load of fish swirl, so we thought we're going to have to give it a go. Try and do sort of a half hour real time episode if we can. Um, in terms of what we've got down there, it's basically just a few pellets that I've chucked down there and effectively just using a, left, a bit of leftover bait and a couple of worms for the hook. Keeping stuff dead simple. Um, but in terms of what I've chosen to fish, this is basically the crux of margin fishing. If there's anything to take away from the video today, this would be it. Basically, I've had a look at my margins and I could fish all the way along there, but um, down to my left, there's a bit, a bit of bare bank. Whenever I can get an area of bare bank to fish to, especially when it comes to edge fishing, that's where I want to look to, to target, basically. It's on a very steep slope, as you can see how the mud bank pretty much slopes away into the, uh, into the lake there. And I've plumbed up very carefully to try and find a little ledge that I can fish on. You can see there's a couple of tail patterns down there now as we speak. And that's where I'm going to look to try and get some bait to hold up. What I'm going to be doing is actually feeding bait that's going to roll down the mud bank and settle on a little shelf. And I'm going to be then just drawing a couple of dendrobinas up the, up the shelf, up the slope, and getting them just to sit on that ledge. And hopefully that's where the fish will be. Because I'll be dragging the bait up the shelf, what I've got on the rig, as per usual, a plenty of nice heavy back shot behind the float. That's three number of, number nines behind there. And I've set the float two inches over depth. And I'll be looking to get the, the float and the line basically touching the bank here. So effectively meaning the fish can't get behind the, the rig and foul hook themselves. That's the theory anyway. So hopefully we'll be able to put it into practice. As you can see, there's still a couple of fish down there, but what I'm going to do is just put in a decent bit of feed more, of, more than anything just to use up what we've got left. So I've just sort of over wetted some paste that we've got into a bit of a slop, so it's a bit of a mess. But the way, reason why I've done that is so it sits against that shelf. And all I'm going to do, is flick a bit of it off my fingers into the lake. So I've misplaced my towel anyway. Just put a few pellets over the top. Again, just some, some more sustenance to the feed that's just going to sit against that shelf. I say, a bit of a messy way of feeding, but that's all we've got left. All I'm going to do is cup that in, as you can see, probably it's about half a top kit away. I'm just going to pop that in next to a twig and pretty much onto the, the actual mud bank above the area that I'm looking to fish, like so. And hopefully with a sticky mix like that, um, swim stim paste there, it's actually going to stick to the, the shelf there and just settle on that ledge. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for it to do. So what I'll do is put in another pot full of that Again, a few pellets and then topped off with a good handful of what's pretty much the slop really. And as you can see, fishing pretty much off the end of my side tray really. And just repeat the process, dump it in against the shelf. A few pellets will settle up there, but I'm not too fussed about that. And that's that area of the peg fed. So we'll leave that for five or 10 minutes, obviously clean my hands up and that and then we'll see if there's a few fish down there to be caught in a second. Right, so while we're waiting for that bait to settle, I'll quickly run you through the rig that we're going to be using to fish down that edge. So I've pointed, pointed out a couple of quick features about it initially, um, in terms of the back shot, but I'll, I'll run through the full thing basically. Start from the top end, elastic choice, double 10 set, fairly tight. Again, a bit overkill really for this lake, but it's just making sure that you're getting the fish out nice and quick um, and pulling them away from any snags. So, Pretty much my go-to margin elastic when you know sort of big fish are concerned really moving down the rig it's 019 main line it's nice and strong there's the back shot there as well and then i've just got a map is3 there nice small float really bulbous tip which is perfect for spending the bait down there and as you can see we've had one or two tail patterns down there already moving down the rig i've got this rig set about two or three inches over depth as i say because i'm going to be looking to drag that bait up the shelf I've just got a spread bulk there of number 10s down to a six inch hook length of 017 to a size 12 canvas and an animal hook. A dead simple rig, and like I say, one that I'll use for most of my big carp fishing down the edge. Obviously the elastic's on a puller kit as well, just in case, and I've got my spare sections behind me if we do hook a real monster, but there's not that many sort of eight, 10 pounders in here, but we're going to basically see just how close in we can catch these fish. There's loads of activity down there as it is, and the bait's only been in there a couple of minutes, so I'm going to just stick a couple of dendrobinas on the hook and go from there. As always with this, it's important that you do stun the worms to stop them doubling over the hook point. So just slapping them on the water two or three times just stuns them, and as you can see, they'll leave that hook point clear. And all I'm going to do 
is just lay that rig into the, the bank, get as tight as I can. Just try to get it off any roots that are down there. Like so, then just dragging that rig up the shelf till it sits properly like that. So like I say, just using those back shot to glue the rig to the banking, leaving plenty of bristle showing as well. And hopefully what's going to happen is those carp are going to effectively crawl up the shelf and just take my, my worms as they're sort of laying up against it. What I don't want them to be able to do, see the odd tail pattern there as well now, is to be able to get in behind the floats. So every bite we should get should be a really positive pull under, floats just disappear and it'll be a fish on. And it's almost comical, especially this time of day on commercials, how close you can catch these fish. There's an indication there. As I say, after filming today, we've got a bit of leftover bait, so we thought might as well not put it to waste. We'll see if we can catch a couple of fish down the edge and see how close we can catch them. See that floats moving all the time. See behind the float loads of tail patterns and swirls and that's the key thing, they're not actually around the float, they're to sort of away from the bank side, away from the float and that's crucial. Because what you don't want is the tail patterns happening right over where your float is. It's effective, that means your bait's beneath the fish's tail and it's liable to be caught well, you're liable to hook it in the tail or sort of in the lower part of its body. Because I've cut, cut the bait in really tight up against the reed, you can see that reed's moving now. Cupped it in against the bank, the fish should be actually attacking that bank side and hopefully somewhere there they'll find my two dendrobeans that I've got on the hook. And there he is, fish on straight away. Again, got my spare sections behind me if I need to. But hopefully, with the nice strong top kits on this midi margin pull, shouldn't have to add any sections. I'm just going to put a few more pellets in. As you can see, that float absolutely shot away. But what I'm saying is basically all the tail patterns and swirls and things like that, you want those away from the float, away from the bank side. The closer you can get your hook bait to the bank side, that's basically where the fish's mouths are going to be and that's ultimately where you want your hook bait to be. So it's trying to make sure that the fish are laying facing into the bank. That's the bit that they're attacking and that's where they're going to find your hook bait. And then it's almost impossible then to foul hook fish. Not a monster, but a decent stamp fish from down the edge. So we'll just nick the hook out of him. Not a particularly big fish, but again, nice little start. And the worms are good to go for another one as well, which is always a bonus. You can see a fish of only probably a pound and a half or so. Still full of, full of energy, but we'll get him popped back before he tries to jump out the net. And hopefully we'll see if we can catch something a little bit bigger. Again, there's another tail pattern down there immediately, so I'll just reuse the hook bait and drop it straight back in. Again, obviously in match conditions, you probably won't get fishing of this quality this close into your, your edge, but it's always worth occasionally matches setting up like a throwaway line to an edge like this, where you can just chuck the odd bit of bait all day and potentially just nick one or two fish from it. So there's another tail pattern down there already. It's exactly the same, I'm laying the, the worms away from the slope and dropping the shot as close in as I can, and the fish has swum into that already. can see how they're almost crawling up the bank side to get to the bait. So 
just reset that rig. I've got a good little reference point there, which is a, a reed that's actually sticking out as to where my float needs to be. It's a tiny little area where the bait will be presented correctly. As I say, just tucking that float right into the edge. Useful little thing there is that reed that's sticking out that's a bit dead. I can use that almost to tell me when there's a fish in the peg or near my hook bait. Like I said, I'll see that move. That was an indication there. That's another one on. Right before a fish takes the bait. And again, just a few more pellets down there. Just to keep the fish interested and keep them tight against the bank. It's incredible just how close in you can catch these fish on an evening. with a bit of careful plumbing up and making a good decision as to where you want to actually have your hook bait sat. Especially on an evening when there's tons of fish in an area of the peg like that, making sure that you're avoiding foul hooking any. Might be slightly bigger this one. Again, whenever I'm playing a fish like this, always worth just taking a, taking a look down there, just seeing if there's any more tail patterns. Just use the puller kit and try and get this one in a little bit quicker. But again, I'm 90% sure if I'd have set up maybe two or three inches away from the bank, I'd foul hook pretty much every fish down there. It'd be 50-50 whether I'd fairly hook them, whereas fishing like this, you know pretty much every time that, that float goes under, the fish is going to be hooked in the mouth. Putting up a really good account of himself, this one. So again, just gonna flick a few more pellets against the bank. They'll settle wherever they need to on that shelf. There's another fish in the bag. Okay, another lovely little mirror carp hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Again, those worms are good to go for another fish as well. So we'll see if we can just hold this one up for camera. There you go, because they've had the aerators on the fish today, they're absolutely full of energy, so I don't want to hold them up for too long. But that's a cracking little fish to be caught, to catch down the edge. Another couple of pounds. So, yeah, so we'll get him slipped back and see if we can get another one on the same two worms that we've had on for the previous two fish. Again, just gonna tweak the shot in again, make sure that's sat correctly. Then we should be good to go for another one. And it shows this time of day, it doesn't really matter what bait you've got to use up in terms of hook baits or feed baits. But as long as you find somewhere decent to present it, the fish are more than obliging in terms of taking the bait. It's just a bit of a route that that's sticking on each time. It's just a case of twitching that round. One's picked it up as it's gone against the bank. Just a case of twitching that round till it finds somewhere to settle. But this one's had it just as the, the worms touched down. It could be a bigger fish, this one, actually. It looks like it. Yeah, much bigger fish. These are sort of the edge dwellers that in a match be very grateful for down that side in a, in a lake where the average stamp of fish is between two and three pound. You can quite often tell with these bigger fish, they just seem to plod around. That's a cracking fish. Lovely big ghost carp, this. Oof, 
just about squeeze him in the net. That's an absolutely belting fish for this, for this lake. And these are what we're after down the edge. We'll just see if we can nick the hook out of him and hold him up for camera. Absolutely nailed right in the top lip. As I say, he's just come in, seen that bait and just mopped it up just as I was trying to set the rig. See if we can turn him round to try and get the hook out. Say so hooked right in the corner of the mouth, sorry, rather than the top lip. Perfect hook hold. So just see if we can sneak that hook out before he flips. Still got a worm on out of the two that we had on, so. Be nice and frugal with the hook baits to say the least. We'll just see if we can hold him up for camera because that's an absolutely clonking fish to catch down the edge. Especially on this lake. I'm not I wasn't really sure that these size of fish were in here. That's a lovely big big old ghost carp that one. See once he calms down. What an absolutely stonking fish to catch down the edge. We'll try and get him popped back, but he's at least at least six or seven pound in. Fantastic edge fish. I say because they've had the aerators on, the fish are full of energy, so a bit of a nightmare to hold up. We'll slip another worm on and see if we can get a fourth one in a row. Okay, he's just moved the float a little bit, so it's worth just double checking that, resetting it. Again, okay, you don't want to be too far over depth, and worse, you don't want to be under depth, because that's when you'll actually foul hook fish much more regularly. So we'll slip another couple of worms on, actually, put a couple of fresh ones on, see if there's another fish down there to be caught. It's quite a decent sized dendrobina, so we'll probably just break him in half. That should be a perfect bait on a size 12. So again, because they're fresh worms, just stun them on the water a couple of times. You'll see they hang nice and nice and still. And that float's gone in perfectly that time. Okay, whenever you're fishing down the edge somewhere like this, there are going to be roots, and bits of trees and reeds and stuff, which are going to make getting the rig in properly a bit of a challenge. So it's worth just taking the time to make sure you're happy with the rig and where it's sitting, you're confident that your bait's on the bottom and you're fishing how you want the rig to fish. Again, in this case, because we're fishing so close, there's no point having a far bank marker or, say, a distance marker on the pole to fish to. All I'm using is a little bit of twig that's sticking out from the bank and fishing as close to that as I possibly can. Just spooked another big fish there. See a huge bow wave left the peg. Just taking my time to reset the rig. Okay, and there's definitely one or two big fish now moving in there. As opposed to the start where we had those two fairly small carp. I think one or two of the bigger fish have moved in to push them out. So hopefully we'll just try and catch one, maybe two more at a push before we wrap it up. But as I say, it's always fantastic sport to do this late on when you've done a bit of filming, use up your leftover bait and try and catch a couple of fish. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to put a couple more pellets in, let them roll off the bank. There's a carp down there now. Just see how the float's moving side to side a little bit. I'm just trying to keep the ducks away as best I can. It might take a little bit longer for this bite because I did spook one fish, especially when you've removed one decent sized one from the peg. Can spread the bait around quite a bit. So you've just got to be aware of that, that some of the bait might have, may, have now, may have now moved down the shelf quite a bit. And there's one on. Again, really sharp little bite. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, not a massive fish this time, I don't think. Decent size. But I think what we'll probably call, we'll probably call this one the last one before we lose the light a bit too much to pack up properly. See, double 10 elastic's absolutely perfect for this style of fishing. Nice and soft on the strikes, so the fish just exits the peg, but powers up really quickly. So especially in an instance like this, I don't have to add any sections. If I was fishing a hollow elastic, you might have to follow the fish out. But I find double 10 is pretty much the perfect margin elastic for decent sized fish. As I say, it's cut, cut with fish from a pound, pound and a half, whatever it was, up to say seven and a half, eight pound. Really comfortably. This one looks like he might have ruled himself in the line a little bit. But he's in the net, and that's another decent sized fish again. Not massive, lovely markings on him though, mint condition. So we'll just slip the hook out and get him popped back as quick as we can. And absolutely nailed right in the top lip. There we go, just goes to show variety of size as well that you'll catch down the edge. I think what I might do is be a bit cheeky and just try and catch one more. But we'll just hold him up for camera dead quick and show you what we've just caught. Again, another lovely little Mo Moncton Pulls carp. As you can see, so we'll get him popped back. Like I said, it'll be interesting to see if there's one more down there to be caught. Amazing what you can catch on sort of scraps of bait if you like. Just found another bit of worm on the foot plate, so I'll probably use that. Again, like I've said, I don't think it matters too much what you use on the hook, as long as you present it properly. And there's one down there already, just seen a tail pattern. It's just gonna be really careful laying that rig in, or lowering it in, I should say. And that's sat perfectly now. It's just had a go at it there, and he's on. Absolutely immediate that, and looks like a slightly de slightly better stamped fish. And it's charged right off, off, up, off up the near side margin, I should say. Almost had to put a section on there. Looked initially like it could be another, another little ghost carp. I've just pulled out of him. And absolutely shot off that one. There's nothing I could do with him. I think even if I'd have had a section, I'd have probably still lost him the rate he shot off at. So we'll just try and get one more to end on if we can. So 
So I'm just going to chuck a few more pellets down there. Just see if we can get one more to end on. You can see I'm a bit of a mess at the moment with all the bait and stuff on my fleece. So I think one more should pretty much round it off for me today. So again, just slightly nicking the dendrobenas right through the head. I find that's the best way to hook them. Then just stun them on the surface of the water again and get that rig back in action. See again by the way that fish turned that he was definitely hooked in the mouth. Just in case of how shallow he ran off at. How shallow he was when he ran off, sorry, really hard to keep the hook hold in. Get another couple of indications there. Just making sure I pull that rigging as tight to the bank as I can. On some days you can even sort of loop the line around a bit of leaf or something on the bank side just to make sure it's absolutely nailed to the near side banking. But hopefully it shouldn't be too long before we get another bite. Like I say, just a fish to end on. There we go, just lost that one. Didn't quite set the hook properly. Nice little sharp indication though. Another little movement of the floats, there's one down there. Just brushing into the, the rig. So I'm waiting for that float to absolutely bury before I strike. It's just about having confidence that your, your hook bait's still visible down there. And that's why careful plumbing up is crucial to make sure it's not hidden behind a root or a branch or whatever it might be that's down there. Again, if you're not happy with where your rig is, just reset it. Very careful not to foul hook a fish, but just a case of laying it back in. There we go, that's another fish on. Looks like a smaller stamp fish this, but I reckon we'll probably call this the last one of the session. It's had a cracking little run of, run of fish down there. Lost a couple where they've just swum off far too quick and the hook's just pulled. But it's been fantastic sport fishing down there in that little edge. It's amazing what you can catch just on a top kit with some leftover bait. If you plumb up carefully, as I say, choose your rig, fish a nice heavy sort of 4x14s rig like we have done down there. It's incredible just what you can catch in a short space of time. Might be a bit bigger than I initially thought this one. Like I say, it just goes to show you don't need sort of 16 metre poles and stuff like that on an evening, just a, a decent strength top kit. Choose a decent elastic and make sure you fish with fairly stout gear. Chuck a bit of bait down edge, plumb up nice and carefully on a shelf. Like I say, effectively this has been filmed pretty much in real time. It's amazing what you can catch. I think this one looks like he's just wrapped himself in the line a little bit. Just missed him with the net. Yep, 
is in the bag. Another lovely fish to end on. Again, absolutely immaculate condition, probably near a three or four pound this one. Just get the, the hook nicked out of him. And we'll hold him up to camera and like I say, that should conclude this little short episode of margin fishing here at Mo Moncton Pools. Again, it's all stuff we've covered before in previous videos is this. But it's nice to show just how close in you can catch on an evening session like this. Again, another lovely fish, sort of three or four pounds, something like that. And like I say, a cracking one to end on. So as always from Last Cast, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next episode.